Hey everyone, good morning. Gina Graham here with the GGBA, obviously. And I'm so excited to have a friend of mine and a longtime member of the GGBA, Elizabeth Bachman, with us today. And Elizabeth has, again, she's been a, a huge supporter of the community, member of the community, and she's been a communications coach as well for, for a long period of time, number of years, clients all over. And so I'm really glad to have her and I wanna talk with her and let you get to know her better. So Elizabeth, welcome. Thank you, Gina. I'm just, I love the GGBA. So I'm so happy to be on a GGBA interview. Yay! Fantastic. So, um, well, let's just kind of get right into it because, you know, we, we do similar work. I, I'm a communications coach as well as are you. And so one of the things that we talk about in communications when dealing with entrepreneurs is the idea of a UVP, the unique value proposition. So what would you say separates you from other coaches? What is your unique value proposition? Well, I am an international opera director and a presentation skills trainer. And I like to say presentation skills because uh, it is all about communication, yes, but it's really about how do you show up? How do you show up in the room? And who you are in the room makes such a difference as to whether you get hired or listened to or anything like that. So my unique value proposition is that I was an international opera director for 30 years, uh, directing people like Luciano Pavarotti and Placido Domingo, everything down to, uh, to teenagers walking on stage for the first time ever, pretty much everything in between. So I have a lot of grounding in how do you make a presentation that people will listen to. And then I ran a small opera company that was mostly for training students internationally, mm -hmm. located in Austria. So we were bilingual, we spoke German and English um, and sort of a mix of the two actually. So I have the business background as well. And, um, and I really learned about presentation skills training or how to speak to get people to open their wallets when I started the opera company because it was a nonprofit and I had to raise the money and we didn't qualify for any grants. So I had to do it all by speaking. And that's where I learned. And I said, you mean there are tools? There are strategies? There's this art called public speaking? Ah, I don't have to make it all up by myself, which is what I had started out doing. So, yay, there's a toolbox. I was so happy. And it worked. Fantastic. So, so much of your career, as you say, has really kind of blossomed and grown from the mm -hmm. basis of opera. So what is it about opera that drew you in, that, that, that made that such an important part of your life? You know, I was a theater kid. I grew up listening to opera. And I grew up loving the theater. Um, I like to think I've been dedicated to the art of great communication since I first walked on stage at the age of five. And my mom said that I was the best damn bunny rabbit ever to grace the stage of the hillside school. And I was hooked. <laughs> so uh, I went from acting to directing to directing opera singers to running a company and now now to teaching people how to use all that experience, using all that experience to inform what people do. But it's all about making, moving an audience to, to do what you want them to do. So in business, it's you want them to approve, you have to hire you or approve the project or motivate your team. In opera, you, you want to sing to get the job if you're doing an audition. And once you've got the job, you want to, you want to move them to tears um, or move them to laugh, which is harder. Comedy is way harder than tragedy. So all of that, it's all, that's why I finally rebranded a couple of years ago as strategic speaking for results, because I start with what's the result you want to get? And then we sort of reverse engineer from there. Interesting. Interesting. Yes. Knowing your audience and what do you want them to do? That's huge. Very much so. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, 
everyone's going through a rough time right now for a number of reasons. Uh, you know, COVID-19, the pandemic, uh, is just one of the ways that our world has been turned upside down. And a lot of entrepreneurs, well, pretty much every entrepreneur that I think we're both well aware of, is having to reevaluate and to pivot. Mm -hmm. uh, and in that regard, as you just mentioned, you were kind of a little bit in front of the curve on this when you did a pivot a couple of years ago. And you've also did a repivot or a pivot recently with a new program and a new podcast. So tell us a little bit about those two. Now, the reason I'm excited to be speaking to you in June is because my podcast, which is called Speakers Who Get Results, so results is the common theme, is featuring LGBTQ guests this month because it's Pride Month. So we're not going to have the big celebration. This is something that I can do for my community. And I was thinking about that, that picture that you have uh, that's actually up on the wall in the Terminal 1 at San Francisco Airport of Harvey Milk and the GGBA at one of the early gay parade festivals. Mm -hmm. And they're standing there in this little booth and I think they had like a, an ironing board with some brochures on it. It was very early on. And a sign that said, that artists, doctors, attorneys, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, who happen to be gay. Yes. The cool part about speakers who get results is I get to share information and interview experts on the subject of presentation skills. And so this month, I'm featuring experts who happen to be gay, including Gina Graham, who leads us up. <laughs> so very excited about that. Excellent. Yeah. And, and thank you for that. It was, it was a lot of fun doing that interview and wait to, can't wait to see that come out as well. And yes, you're right. That's, that's the one thing that the GGBA was founded on is that the sense of who happens to be gay. Um, and that is an amazing picture. As you say, there's Harvey Milk there. There's Tom Waddell, who was the founder of the Gay Games, also a, a very early GGBA member, founding member. Um, and I think that that's something that may often get overlooked is they just happen to be gay. It's not what mm -hmm. we lead with, it's just part of who we are. So very interesting. And um, so you talk about the clients you have, you've got the podcast that goes on. You, I know you've, you've talked to a lot of different people. So as you think about who you wanna work with, who is your ideal client? So for members or the, the entrepreneurs, companies that members know and work with, who is your ideal client? How would we know to recommend someone to you? Well, my ideal client is someone who is really smart and who knows a whole lot about something complicated. But when they need to make a speech that gets a result, they're not happy with the results they're getting. And so I really, you know, sometimes it means that they're, they're interesting and excited, but they, they can't be concise. And sometimes it means that they can't really be compelling. So uh, really what I work on is how do you use speaking to position yourself? It is still talking live is the best way to move people to do what you want them to do. It just, it just people perceive you in so many different ways. A lot of what I talk about on the podcast, Speakers Who Get Results, is we talk a lot about leadership because speaking is a tool and presentation skills are a tool. Whether you're presenting in a meeting and you're trying to convince people to do what you want to do, or you're speaking on a stage or you're giving a webinar or you're trying to get people to hire you, anything like that, it's a cool, fun tool, but it is a tool. And so the key is what do you want this tool to do for you and most of the time, it's about making a sale, which could also be selling an idea. You know, you're selling a product, a service, a company, or you're selling the idea that they should do what you want them to do. And uh, so it's a really amazing, fun, cool tool. And I'm appalled how many people aren't really using it very I mean, have you ever sat through a boring speech? Well, I think we all have on that. Yeah, yeah. So the best people for me to work with are people who need to get a result 
when they give a speech or, or they know they need to be out there and they're not, um, they're not really, they're not out there. They don't really know how to get out there. So get out there and speak, or they're in a, a position where they need to get out there and speak and they think, I'm not doing it very well. I'm all about having the strategy and the structure to teach people how to do that. And it can be anything, particularly, I was thinking the other day, I think that really fundamentally what my purpose is, is to help Women, women and minorities who aren't being heard. So if you're hitting a glass ceiling in your company, for instance, and they perceive you as, oh yeah, you know, there's Gina. She's really good at what she does. And, you know, she takes care of everything. I don't have to think about that department because Gina takes care of everything. And Gina's over there saying, yes, but I want to be a vice president. And, uh, and, but they just think of you as someone who's really good at your job and don't think further then speaking is a great way to position yourself as someone who should be hired or promoted or nowadays you know in the now that we're having we're heading into a global recession someone who should be kept along if they're if they're cutting then let's not cut make sure you're not the one who gets cut whose job gets cut and the way you can do that is by showing up and making yourself part of the conversation inserting yourself into the conversation with valuable information to give. Okay, got that. Yes, totally agree. So uh, would you say, uh, you mentioned that you're working uh, with women and people of color is, or minorities. Is, mm -hmm. is that kind of a focus for you? Is, is, do you focus there or are uh, people that identify as male, are, are you work with them as well? I work with men, I work with women. Uh, it tends to be more women than men, mostly because I'm I tend to be perceived as the person who can get you noticed, and it tends to be women who aren't noticed. Uh, I've actually found I, I work a lot in the diversity and inclusion space, and um, men tend to be noticed because they're men, and gender tends to be decisions are made on whether you're whether they're going to listen to you is made more on gender than it is on the color of your skin so um, i just did a wonderful interview with uh, an amazing friend who is african-american and gay and uh, and has a corporate job but a lot of them i said do you run into this do you run into this and he goes no no because those are problems that women face not being heard he has enough hurdles to to jump being African American and gay, but the hurdles that the women run into, he never occurred to him, and that was a really interesting lesson to me, to say, ah, oh, so these some of the challenges that you deal with are gender linked. Some of them are how you're perceived on the color of your skin or where you come from. And sometimes it's just plain, we're in an international, uh, sometimes the presentation skills are as basic as make sure you're speaking clearly, because if you are speaking English to a group that all grew up elsewhere, and English is their second or third language, they may not understand. So I do a lot of international work as well. And so that's another thing. I was thinking... Oh, yeah. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I just, I was just thinking that leadership and getting out there and speaking is, is a big part of what I do, but I also really address what are the stumbling blocks? What are the challenges? Whether, and are, if the challenge is that you're perceived as less than because of how you look, that's one thing. If you're perceived as less than because of your gender, that's another. You know, I'm very aware that as a white lesbian, I, I pass the corporate situation. You know, I hate using that phrase, but you know, as a, a lot of the, the issues that I have to deal with are not the same that my African-American friends deal with or my Latino friends, male or female. So it all depends on who you are and what your issue, you know, 
each person can make diversity an asset. It's a matter of being strategic about it. Got it. So when someone, uh, when you when you take on new clients, what does this look like? Do you do groups? Do you do one on one? Uh, are you doing in person? Do you do virtual? Uh, give us a little bit more sense of, of how you do what you do. Well, right now everything's virtual, and actually, because I work with people in lots of different time zones, most of the time I'm working virtually. If I can, if it is geographically possible and I can come and do your initial session with you in person, I will. Um, so the whole working from home thing was, that's pretty much what I do anyway. What we start off with is defining what you want. And as much as anything, it's an idea, it's a way of getting all those ideas out of your head and onto paper. And we, we, we lay out a roadmap. We figure out, okay, where do you want to go? How are we going to get you there and plan the strategy? Then we go back and we fill in the details. Uh, and I met with individuals and with groups. Uh, I have a group of female dentists that I'm working with because they can get paid for doing speeches, and but they're not raising their hand enough. So as much as anything, I'm working with them on how to get out there and speak because in their field, it's 95% men. And so the company that hired me is one of the sponsoring companies and they said, we want more women out there. And it's a combination of getting the women to raise their hand. And then once they do, how do you go out there and do a really a good job? Actually, they hired me to say, make sure they do a better job. So yes. Well, let's go with great job. Like, you know, we want, we want to say great job. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, so that, groups and individuals. Yes. Okay. Uh, that is really good to know. Thank you. And I'm sure for the members as well, they now have a better idea of who you are, what you can do with them and who they, why they should come to you and who they should recommend to come to you. Uh, any final thoughts uh, before we have to go here on, on strategic speaking for results in the podcast? Oh. Yes, well, I, I believe that whether you're speaking to sell a product or you are enrolling a client or you're in a meeting, doing a presentation in a meeting, it's all a sales speech. And sales is like sex. Nothing happens till somebody gets excited. Well, that's a line that I'm sure will be memorable. <laughs> Elizabeth, thank you so much for coming by. We really appreciate it. And one before we go, what is your website again so people can hear it as well as see it? ElizabethBachman.com. That's Elizabeth with a Z and Bachman, B-A-C-H-M-A-N.com. And you can also find the podcast there featuring Gina Graham to start out. So I, in, I encourage anybody to look me up by name or speakers who get results and check out our list. I have some dynamite speakers, and Gina is one of them. Excellent. Well, I'm sure everyone will do that. Thank you again for stopping by. Thanks, Gina.